And this is a story of a companion by the name of Marthad ibn Abi Marthad al-Ghanawi radiyallahu anhu. He lived in Mecca and he had a girlfriend. Her name was Anaq. And of course, they weren't married. So they had a relationship in where he would spend nights with her. He would spend time with her. He would drink with her and so on. A few years go by and Islam comes and he accepts Islam. And uh, the event of the Hijrah takes place to al Madinah. So eventually he had no other choice but to sacrifice his relationship with this girl, Anaq. He sacrificed that relationship for the sake of Allah. And he migrated with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca until he reached al Madinah. And all the other Sahaba radiallahu anhum did the migration as well. A few months go by in Medina. It was very difficult uh, for Murthad radiallahu anhu to give up what he gave up. I mean, there was intense and strong love between them. So when he's in Medina, the problem is that in Mecca, there are still prisoners of the believers. That as they were trying to escape Mecca, they were captured by Quraysh and they were imprisoned and they were tortured. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrives to Medina, the first thing he does is that he selects and he chooses some of the Sahaba that were strong, that were tough, and he chose them so that he sends them back to Mecca so they can go into Mecca and free the prisoners of the believers and get them out of trouble. So he and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is choosing some Sahaba and he chooses from among them Marthad Al-Ghanawi radiallahu anhu. Marthad was a tough man. He was strong. He's selected for this mission to go and free some of his brothers that are still trapped in Mecca. So now he narrates the story and he says, I left Medina and I began to approach Mecca. It was a night, a full moon's night. So it was a bright night. I went until I reached one of the walls of Mecca and he stuck himself to the wall because obviously he doesn't want to be found and he doesn't want to be seen. And he began to walk alongside this wall. And he says, as I'm walking, I see Anaq. She saw me. And she said, Marthad. She found me. She recognized him from his shadow. Marthad, is that you? And he kept quiet. He didn't say anything. She said again, Marthad. And now this time he gave in and he said, Marthad, yeah, it's me. She said, oh, welcome. She's remembering the old days she had with Martha radiallahu anhu. She said, come tonight, come over and let, let, and sleep over my place tonight. So without hesitation, radiallahu anhu, he stood right in front of her and he said, Ya Anaq, Allah Azza wa Jal has made zina, has made adultery impermissible. It's haram. I'm in a different religion and things are very different here. That is absolutely incorrect for me to pursue with you and go home tonight. So she, uh, being a disbeliever, she's got no idea what this halal and haram is and what this zina is. She's confused. And she said to him, uh, what do you mean zina? It's as though she, she felt like she's been accused in her, in her dignity and her honor. So she said to him, listen, if you don't come tonight with me, I'm going to scream out from here that you're the one who's coming into Mecca, picking up the prisoners and freeing them. But he heard that and he began to run. He's running towards a mountain in Mecca called Al Khandama. And she screams out, oh, People of Mecca, this is the man who comes in and carries your prisoners and he frees them. So he began to run as fast as he can. He gets to the mountain Al Khandama and he hides in a cave that he knows. He was a Meccan boy, so he knows around. And he says, I can count almost eight men of the strong men of Mecca. They were on their horses and they're following me. So they get to him and they're following and they're on the mountain and they're searching for him. And they said they spent a while on the mountain and he's hidden in the cave and he's really silent. And he says, until they gave up the search. So everyone got onto their horses, about to go down the mountain and just go back to their houses. And he says, except for one of him, he came and he wanted to urinate. So he began to urinate. He urinated on my head. And Allah blinded him that he did not see me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a miracle. So they went. And what would you think Marthad radiallahu anhu is going to do? 
he did not just pick himself up and go straight back to Medina. He doesn't want to upset Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his brother in Mecca that is waiting for him. So he goes back into Mecca once again and this time he gets there successfully. He finds the man chained on the floor. So he unties him basically and he puts him on his back. Remember, Marthad was a strong man and he walks with him until he reaches a place known as al idkhir which is just outside Mecca. Once he gets there, he puts the brother down and he cuts off the iron feathers that were on his feet and the chains that were in his hand and so on so that the Sahabi radiallahu anhu could walk on his own and then they make their way until they reach al Madina. Walhamdulillah, successful, he got his brother released. And the next day, he comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's going to ask him a question. You wouldn't even imagine he's going to ask this question. He says to him, Ya Rasulullah, please give me permission that I go back to Mecca and get married to my old, my ex, my girlfriend, Anaq. Give me permission to go. And by the way, she almost killed him. But this is the intense love that was between them. He says, give me permission to go back and marry her. In the narration, it says, Nabi Sallallahu remained silent. Why did he remain silent? Even though the answer is very clear, that it's not allowed for a believer to get married to a disbeliever. And that's exactly what Anaq is. So the answer is, Martha, no, goodbye. But the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't answer. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was feeling what Martha Radiallahu Anhu was going through. It's not easy. He loved the girl. And so just to dismiss him, and just uh, give him a bold answer. Look, it's haram, just go. It's, it, he's not going to swallow that really easy. And he's going to remain hurt all his life. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he acknowledges this sensitive situation. Someone has loved a girl for all his life in Mecca. And he spent most of the time with her. And he's coming to you for direction. How are you going to answer this situation? Very sensitive. It was so sensitive that Allah Azza wa Jal sends down an ayah from above seven heavens to treat this case of Martha radiallahu anhu. Az-zani la yankihu illa zaniyatan aw mushrika wa az-zaniyatu la yankihuha illa zanin aw mushrik wa hurrima thalika ala al-mu'mineen. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received this wahi. He gets up and he faces Martha and he says to him, Martha, Allah has just revealed the adulterer shall not marry anyone except an adulteress or a disbeliever. And the adulteress shall not get married to anyone except an adulterer or a disbeliever. And Allah has made this impermissible upon the believers. Don't get, get married to her, O Martha. Martha radiallahu anhu listens to this ayah and he listens to the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he gets up and he is so happy. He's so, yani, he's full of joy and he's full of pleasure and contentment from the inside. You know why? Because Allah declared him from among the mu'mineen. Allah said, وَحُرِّمَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Ya Marthad, you're from the mu'mineen. You're from the believers. And you're not supposed to do that. He gets up and it's as though nothing has ever entered his heart of love in his life. These are the true followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa no matter how much they're attached to something, they would let it go in an instant if they knew that this would displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.